Welcome to Crafty Hints. I'm Chantel. I'm so excited to have you here again today. We've got some tiered tray minis, so let's get started. I took this white nautical rope and a K-cup, so it's all emptied out. It's been used, so we're reusing, recycling, and all of that. I took apart the nautical rope, and then I split each of those in half also. Now I'm gluing it within the center, in the center of the bottom of the K-cup. In total, I'll use three of those half strands. And then what I did was I tucked every other piece into the center, and now I took another strand and I'm going to weave it around this. And I'm sorry, when I first started, I thought it might be best to start at this angle, but I'm gonna switch it up here in just a second so that you can see it a little bit easier. With those pieces tucked in the cup, it was easier to go over, under, over, under. So I'm coming around on my first turn here. I'm gonna clip off that beginning piece and I'll just tuck this right beside it and go around again. Now, as I come around the other time, I'm going to do it in reverse. If it was over before, it'll go under now. And you don't really need to tuck them into the center. It was just an easy way that I found. As I go on, I just kind of look at the other piece and flip it forward or flip it backwards if I need to go over or under. Pretty simple there. It's just a little bit of a basket weave. And if you saw before, I took twine and wrapped another K-cup to make a different basket. And I'll link that right up here. It is a fun little basket, and I think you'll like that one too. This one, I was going to use it as an Easter basket, and I didn't end up with any little eggs. So I will put some flowers in it, but feel free to make it and put some mini eggs in there. If you have some air dry clay, or if you have some mini little decorative eggs, that would be adorable. But this is a versatile little basket then. You know, you can change it up for the different holidays. I can see it would be cute with some apples in there. You could put carrots in there. Whatever you want, you know. All right, so then I took some wire jute twine and I just wound a full... Um, piece you know that rope is twisted in three and I just put a full piece on here and wound that around I thought that would make a good handle for my basket now I'm just trimming off those that excess and I'm going to tuck it down inside now if you're not going to totally fill your basket you could definitely put a liner in there here, I put a little bit of hot glue and then I pressed it down on my silicone mat so that it'll set flat. I noticed that a little bit of the rope, you know, might sit a little bit uneven on the bottom. So I just did that. If you have a silicone mat, parchment paper might work. I'm not positive on that. Um, but if you have a silicone pot holder or a silicone spoon, that's another thing you could definitely do. All right, now I'm taking another full piece and I'm going to put that around the top. That's going to finish off that lip of the basket, that top edge. It'll cover that little lip of the K-cup and I think it gives it a nice finished look. If you're thinking about making one of these, let me know below what you're going to put in it. I think it'll be interesting to see what different people will do. All right, this is just a little piece of floral foam. And then I'll put a few flowers in there. I think this basket is just adorable. So any type of flowers, I thought let's just fill it with all different spring flowers. That'll be fun. And here it is. How cute is that? I think it's a great touch to any tiered tray. 
All right, just to let you know, I am taking part in Crafted by Corey's mini challenge. This month it was spring or Easter, so I've got a little bit of a mix there. Down below will be a playlist of other great crafters. So follow in my description box. And you've seen Corey's channel. You have to up by now. If, please visit her. Subscribe. You will love it. Okay, I got these little styrofoam eggs from the Dollar Tree. I would suggest maybe trying to put these on a toothpick instead of the skewer because the hole does come a little bit big and it is a little bit noticeable. So maybe put that on a toothpick instead. And I'm just using a, a couple different chalk paints. I like them because they give you a nice full coverage and you usually only need one coat. Now I'm taking some of my apple barrel, I think it's melted chocolate was what that was. And now a little bit of water, I'm just using an old lid. And there isn't still spaghetti sauce in there, it's just a stained little rim there. All right, I'm just mixing that up. In fact, I ran it through the dishwasher. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I painted those all different pastel colors. And now I'm just going to splatter them. And I noticed while I thinned this out, it's too thin. And just a word to the wise, if you're doing this on your own, I would put this in a box. My blinds, my window may have a little bit of brown splatter to them. And what I'm doing is I'm taking this chunky brush and just tapping it on my finger. Someone suggested this to me as opposed to using a toothbrush and running your finger along it. So just another way to try that out. So I go back and add just a little more chocolate paint to this. But I definitely gave it a good shot. And you'll see, I do a couple others. I think it turns out cute. My camera even enjoyed a bit of a splatter or two. So I do apologize that I didn't realize that until I was done painting them. But I think you get the full effect and maybe a little bit more. You just give these a little bit of a turn. I did go to the... Um, toothpicks here as you can see and they give it a little bit of a smaller hole and just continue to tap that I, it does make a fun splatter effect but whatever works best for you in the future i would do this in a box but for the camera i need to do it there but here's my little speckled eggs i think they are too cute they do kind of remind me of the hershey's ones if you're enjoying and you haven't subscribed yet, please do and hit that thumbs up. All of these things help my channel and lets YouTube know what people like and they'll suggest it to other people. So I took a piece of paper. It does not need to be a colored piece of paper. It was just was what was at hand's reach and I just covered that with tissue paper. My tissue paper had a line in it. So I just trimmed it in the center and had them meet and just scotch taped it down. Now I'm taking two tumbling tower blocks and just putting a little bit of hot glue and adhering those to each other. And I'm going to use lavender to paint one and a three and a quarter inch wood circle. And I'll also do that with a plaster. Now I ran these through my printer and I put it on the draft setting because you don't need a ton of ink in this. This is just like wrapping paper, tissue paper, and actually I think I'll try and get even a little bit thinner tissue paper. This is a tissue paper from the Dollar Tree. And on the back side, it has just a little bit of a, uh, not a silver, but like a frosted color to it. All right, I'm trying another method to adhere it. I'm gonna use my Crafters Extra Strength Elmer's glue stick, and I'm going to just put this on here. I decided to line it up. It might be better to just trim off at least one edge so that I could see the edge a little bit better. Now, as you can see, 
tissue paper is real well you know tissue paper is really delicate but look how many times I'm able to lift this back up it hasn't torn and or anything which it would have with the Mod Podge trying to lift it that many times so this might be another way of doing it if you're not feeling like you need it across the top Here's the other one that I did and I made my circle a little bit larger on purpose because I didn't want this one to have an edge so that way I could trim around it. Um, I didn't want that full circle. I kind of just wanted it to go fully to the edge and then I could just trim it off but it gave me a good surface to work with. Here I'm using the Satin Mod Podge and I just... I would use just the normal Mod Podge. That would be fine. This was the one I grabbed. I have several different types. Either any of them would have worked, really. I just probably wouldn't use Glossy for this. And so you put a little bit and then you rub it down. Then you put a little bit more and you rub it down. Just make sure you don't get it too thick. When you get it too thick is when you get those bubbles and you know then it can easily rip and those things. But just showing you that either way will work. And this one I did decide I will put a coat over the top as well. So it did give this kind of a frosted purple effect. Now I take my file and I just go around the outside edge and this will just take it off easily. It trims it right to the edge and I did this on both of them. Made sure that was good and dry underneath and now I'm putting just a coat over the top. I decided I'm gonna go ahead and seal this one all the way in. So then I let it fully dry before I trimmed the edges. While that dried, I went ahead and glued this one up. And this easy little stand just works so nice. Those circles I got at Walmart, they're like $2 for a six pack. These, there was a pack of three different type crosses at the Dollar Tree in their Crafters Square. That's where I got this one. I thought that was a nice little message to add to the tiered tray. So just a little bit of glue will do. Glue that up. Isn't that a pretty lavender color? It's the first time I've used that one. All right, here they are on the tear tray. I think you had a sneak peek earlier, but here they are a little bit closer up. I think they turned out adorable. All right, let's get to DIY four. Now, I apologize, my camera was not going. I thought it was. I used my maize chalk paint and added a little bit of plaster for a lighter one. I wanted to show you that I did find the tumbling tower blocks in like the summer gifts or over by the Easter stuff and they come in a brown box. They're fairly similar. They were a tiny bit taller than the other ones but they both had 72 blocks. I do find sometimes they're bigger different boxes come and are a little bit bigger than the other two. So if you've had a hard time finding those tumbling tower blocks, I suggest looking with the toys over by the Easter section. I would grab a bunch now so that you have them. If you've noticed, I like to use those on my crafts. I think that they are just such a handy piece. Now I use a little bit of pumpkin for the chick's beak. 
I know I used the chicks before. Oh, I did glue two of those chick ornaments from the Dollar Tree together before I painted them. Now I unwound a cotton ball, regular like bathroom cotton ball, and I'm going to cover up the hole and just give him a little bit of fuzzy feathers on the top of his head. You know how chicks have that little bit of fuzzy on top? Just trim him down and make him fun and make it, I don't know, he's just kind of cute and fun, right? I hope you're having fun with these. I think minis just are a fun little thing that you can have fun with. Make it to suit whatever holiday or season you're trying to do. The chick, you know, will last through spring. It doesn't have to be for Easter. It was just kind of funny. Did I absolutely need him? No, I have my other chick, but I just thought he was adorable. I threw a little bit of that paint down on his feet. All right, we're getting to the last DIY, and I hope that you're still with me and enjoying these. I do want to know which one was your favorite, and also, as I move out of Easter and a little bit of still maybe spring, what would you like to see? That's important to me, too, adding things that you'd like to see or do or see me do. All right, these stickers I found in the Crafter's Square. I trimmed down this one that has like a zigzag pattern, but it also has like flowers with it. And I thought, wouldn't that be cute to go across the seam of these Easter eggs? So I just trimmed out the flowers, leaving the zigzag for another project. That might be fun to put on the edge of a tray or a frame or something. And then there's these running flowers. And, you know, they just call it, one's a zigzag jewel border. I think the other one's like a floral border. But I'm just adding those all the way around the egg. And if you are happy with it at this point, let them go. Let them be. You also might want to just put a little bit of something in the bottom of it to weigh it down. I'm adding glue to the bottom of this. I'm going to press it down on my silicone mat again. That's going to help it just to stand up. You could glue it on a couple tumbling tower blocks if you wanted to. And now I'm going to give this one coat of chalk paint and then I'll come back and do another one. With this slipperier surface, I did find it needed a couple coats. So just getting those nooks and crannies, it gets a little bit difficult, but I used a skewer and that was fine. And here's the other one. I use celery on this one and pool on the other. I find most of my chalk paints at Walmart. And here they are on my tear tray. Aren't those just a fun little accessory to go with the others? Again, thank you from the bottom of my heart for watching. Don't forget to go to the playlist. There's going to be some amazing crafters. And to visit Corey and subscribe to her channel. Thanks again. Here is my Easter spring playlist. If you just click on that, it'll show you what I've done for the season so far. Thanks again. Bye-bye.